Welcome to everyone who is viewing tonight's show on the ACAP community website, the ACAP Guilford Facebook page, or our YouTube channel. We are so glad to have you join us tonight. For those of you who may not be familiar with who ACAP is, let me tell you a little bit. At its core, ACAP Community is an educational 5013C, a nonprofit organization that offers information, resources, support, and community for those of us who are caring for aging parents. As you can tell from our name, our focus is on supporting adults as they care for their aging parents. However, all caregivers are welcome, whether you're an adult child, another relative, a friend, or a professional. Each local ACAP chapter offers monthly programs that address issues related to aging, family dynamics, and adult child caregiving. Presenters are experts on the topic they address, and many are or have been caregivers for their own parents or in-laws. We now have seven chapters across the United States. ACAP Guilford meets each month on the third Thursday at 6 p.m. We've been meeting at First Baptist Church, 1000 West Friendly Avenue, Greensboro, and virtually on Facebook or the ACAP community website. And you can watch past programs from all of our chapters on YouTube. We have a wonderful program for tonight. We would like to thank Riz, first, but I would like to thank Griswold Home Care for their support of ACAP in Guilford County. Griswold Griswold Home Care has been serving older adults and their families for over 41 years by providing the assistance They'd needed rather to allow be. adults to remain at home, whether they, wherever they call home. They do this through providing personal care, homemaking, and companionship services. Griswold believes strongly in supporting families who are providing care for an aging parent by connecting them with resources who can provide financial support, veterans benefits, respite services, and a wide range of community programs. My mom's home is nine rooms and 56 years of memories. Everything that's important to her happened under this roof. She slowed down a little and needs help. Nothing too difficult, just a hand with everyday chores someone to look after her when I can't. My mom loves her home. There's no place she'd rather be. Thank you again to Griswold Home Care for its ongoing support of ACAP Guilford. And now let's turn to our program for tonight. We would like this to be an interactive program, so if you have questions or comments, please put them in the chat box. You know, the topics of our programs vary every month, often with subject matter that addresses a particular situation or need. Tonight, we would like to discuss a more general topic, one that affects every part of our bodies, including our brains. We know that exercise is vitally important for keeping our bodies and brains healthy, and in turn, allowing us to take care of our day-to-day -day responsibilities, work, volunteer, and enjoy the pleasures of hobbies and sports. How often do you exercise? What exercises do you do and why is this exercise important? We're very pleased to have Natalie Huffheim with us tonight to talk about morning stretch movement for older bodies. Natalie is a native of Charlotte, North Carolina, who moved to Greensboro in 2008 to pursue her first degree from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro in piano and a minor in psychology. After completing her degree, she took a job as a bartender at a local restaurant where she worked for a few years before she went back to UNCG for a second degree in English and with a concentration in secondary education. She, was, she taught from 2015 to 2022 in a local high school and she was named the Rookie Teacher of the Year her first year and Sophomore Teacher of the Year 2017 to 2022. Natalie's fitness career began in 2017 when she became a certified body pump instructor and she has taught group fitness classes and worked as a personal trainer at the Bryan YMCA in Greensboro since then. 
She has recently left her role as an educator to become the wellness director of the Bryan YMCA. Natalie, welcome. Hi, everyone. Good evening. So again, I'm Natalie Huffine. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight and talk about movement for older bodies, for all bodies, for any bodies. So on our next slide, I believe it has my name again, but after that, <laughs> which hi is me now, like, oh my gosh. So these are my parents, Peter and Virginia Popovich, and they are my inspiration. They are um, here in Greensboro. I'm so fortunate to have my parents nearby, but they participate in the senior games. They play pickleball. My dad will play any racket sports. Um, my mom, is a fisherman by trade. And so they are my inspiration for living an active and a healthy lifestyle. And I hope through my presentation today that maybe they can be your inspiration too. So let's talk about the rundown. Here's what we're doing tonight. We are talking about healthy aging. I'm cutting my head off. Let's do this. Let's make this just a little more, just like you and me talking. Is that, yeah, okay, cool, perfect. I feel like when I was standing over there, it was like we were so far away from each other, but now it's like we're having a little chat about healthy movement for all bodies. Yeah, I mean, we'll stand up and move around later. Don't worry, I got you. But healthy aging, what does that look like? What does it feel like? And then the second part of our program tonight, we're gonna to talk about healthy movement, the impact of movement and exercise or lack thereof on the physical, cognitive, and emotional well-being. Exercise that will strengthen bodies and minds of all stages of aging. And I wanna to talk to you about some local resources that'll focus on movement and exercise for an older population, provide some recreational activities, social support services, and activities offering the opportunity for older adults to spend time reminiscing. So, so much stuff for us to talk about. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first of all, what is healthy? We hear this term all over the place. So because I'm a former English teacher, of course I had to look it up for you. Healthy is an adjective meaning in good health. So I want us to keep that filed away as we proceed through this program tonight. Healthy just means in good health. I think unfortunately the media tends to skew how we see healthy, how we define healthy for ourselves. So remember, if nothing else, we're just gonna hold on to this idea that healthy means in good health. Okay, part one, healthy aging. So what does that look like? Every body is different, okay? So the same way that we talked about how we were gonna hold on to this idea of healthy, just meaning in good health, I want you to remember that it's going to look different and feel different for everyone. And it is not fair to try to compare our journey with anybody else's. And I'll say that a couple of times tonight, so thank you for sticking with me. Okay from the National Library of Medicine, because again, former English teacher, I wanna make sure I'm supporting my opinion with some facts. This is how we get a good argument. So from the National Library of Medicine, adults 40 and older found that taking 8,000 steps or more per day, per day, compared to only taking 4,000 steps was associated with a 51% lower risk of death from all causes. So how can we increase our steps? Some of the easiest ways are if we're driving somewhere, can we take a parking spot that's a little further away? I love an elevator as much as the next person. Can we consider taking the stairs? If you're like me and maybe you find yourself in a desk job, can we take some time to get up and step outside? Um, if you do find yourself in an office like mine, especially as we approach these um, summer months, maybe the AC in your building is a little brisk as well. So I, I like to call it my lizard moments where I go outside and just feel the sunshine on my face. Um, we're at the YMCA right now. And so I have been known to take laps around the building. Any way we can increase our steps. If you have a shopping mall nearby that you enjoy, especially as it gets warmer outside, walk through that shopping mall. I'm not saying go buy anything, but it's a great way to just increase the number of steps that we take. Because adults with obesity have an increased risk of death, have an increased risk of disability, and have an increased risk 
of many diseases such as type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. But wait, I'm not saying that we have to get skinny because here's the skinny on being skinny. It can weaken your immune system. We'll talk a little bit more about obesity versus underweight versus what that looks like for every body, okay? But it can weaken your immune system. It can increase the risk of bone fracture and in some cases can be a symptom of disease. So again, no one is encouraging any sort of rapid weight loss, just thinking about ways that we can be healthier. Okay, so we talked about um, obesity and being skinny. And again, because I love some facts, the National Library of Medicine says that researchers found that in adults older than 55, muscle mass was a better indicator of longevity than weight or body mass index or BMI. Now, again, we're not talking about BMI, but I think it's important to clarify what BMI is because it is a formula that can help you identify your body mass index on a scale. So we've got some pictures provided. The formula metric is your weight in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared. And if you're like me and you're like, oh, yikes, metric system, I don't know about that. I got you with the imperial. So imperial formula, 703 times your weight in pounds divided by your height in inches squared. If you like an example, I did provide my BMI, which is awesome. Um, awesome to share that kind of information. But 703 times 144, which is my weight in pounds, over my height in inches squared, which is 4,489. I'm five foot seven, making my BMI 22.55, which hits me right in that normal range. Again, these are just formulas. These are just tools. Please talk to a physician if you have more questions about BMI. Okay, so what does healthy feel like? So it really depends on the role of movement and healthy aging. Being healthy can feel different for everybody. And I think a lot of us have a lot of head trash, right? That little voice in your head that has a whole opinion around what healthy is supposed to feel like. And again, Every body is different. And so I will always encourage you to find movement that feels good in your body. If it does not feel good, please don't do it. All right. From the physical activity guidelines for Americans, at least 150 minutes, that's two and a half hours a week of moderate intensity aerobic exercise like brisk walking or fast dancing. So for me, because two and a half hours is a large chunk of time. How do we break that down? Think three 50 minute workouts or my personal favorite five 30 minute workouts. I can do 30 minutes five days a week. I might have to get up a little bit earlier in the morning to make it happen, but I can do that, right? Just two and a half hours per week. Being active at least three days a week is best, but doing anything is better than nothing. Um, for those of you who remember the fitness instructor Sean T. He had insanity and he did like hip hop abs. He had this saying that was like, if you are up and moving around, you are running laps around the people sitting on the couch. And sometimes that's all it takes. It's just that reminder that doing anything is better than doing nothing. So mix it up, right? Muscle strengthening activities like weightlifting or doing sit-ups at least two days per week, right? Strength training, when we build our muscles, when we lift heavy things, not only are we helping our muscles, but you're helping your bone density and you're supporting your joints. Awesome. And then combine that with multiple components of exercise. Think group fitness classes. My background is in group fitness. I'm a group fitness gal. Put me in a class, I'm here for it. But variety is the spice of life here. Mix it up. Okay. We made it through part one, everybody. Yes, on to part two, healthy movement. Oh my gosh, my favorite question. What does that look like? And again, kind of retracing my steps to what I talked about before. Remember, healthy movement is going to feel different for everybody. So what healthy movement looks like, feels like for me, might not look and feel the same for you. And that's totally cool.
So I think one of my favorite analogies about exercise is that it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, and if you try to go into exercise with this mindset that like, if you just power through it, get as much as you done, get as much done as you can, as quick as you can, you're going to get instant results. That's not going to be the case. It is a marathon. We're in this for the long haul. We want healthy movement for life. And with that same mindset of it's a marathon, not a sprint, over-exercising can cause injury, which may lead to quitting. A steady rate of progress is the best approach. And more importantly, rest days are just as important as your work days. If you are not giving your body a chance to rest and recover, then it's not getting a chance to get better. So some things that I would like you to keep in mind when you're thinking about this marathon of super awesome exercise. Please begin your exercise program slowly with low intensity exercises. If you are dying to try CrossFit, but you haven't done any sort of physical movement recently, maybe hold off. Start with maybe walking on the treadmill, going for a swim, trying a group exercise class, finding a walking group with friends. And then as you build that momentum, get into that CrossFit class. Please always make sure that you have some kind of warm up five to 10 minutes before exercising. You don't want to shock your muscles. You want to give them a chance to warm up. As your muscles get warm, they lengthen, allowing you to go deeper into your workouts, to push yourself a little bit harder, and to just avoid injury. And of course, you always want to cool down about four to 12 minutes. Not only does your cool down bring your heart rate back down, but it lets your body know the hard work is over. We've done it. We can rest now. Please pay attention to your surroundings when you're exercising outdoors. If you do enjoy running outside or walking outside, be mindful of if there's traffic or any other vehicles moving around you. Also, please pay attention to the heat index before going outside. And if you are going to exercise outdoors, make sure that you're wearing appropriate clothing. If it is the summer, we want to wear lightweight, moisture wicking clothing, right? We want to get the sweat off of the skin versus if it is the winter time and you're outside exercising, we want to wear layers because when you initially start exercising, your body is not as warm. So you want to make sure that you've got some layers when it's cold outside and as your body warms up, then you can remove them. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Please drink lots of water before, during, and after your workout sessions. If you wait until you feel thirsty, it's too late. So little sips throughout your workout. Um, if you are interested in adding in some sort of like liquid IV or Gatorade, any sort of supplement, I encourage you to speak to your general healthcare physician, um, but water is always best. Uh, wear appropriate clothing and shoes. I kind of jumped ahead with the clothing, but shoes. If you are on social media, like I am, maybe you've seen the trend of people not wanting to wear shoes in the gym. This is me as your friend saying, if you're going into a gym, please wear closed toed shoes with the heel, maybe like a sneaker, that would be ideal. And if you're going outside, same kind of thing, protect your feet, wear shoes that are comfortable. Make sure you pick a pair that you like and understand that different activities require different types of shoes. If we're going for a walk or a run, maybe we want a shoe with a little more support, right? If you're doing weight training, you want more of a flatter heel. But like I said before, with adding Gatorade or liquid IV, talk to your physician about what's going to be best. And if you experience foot pain, ditch the shoes and try a new pair, right? Finally, if you have specific health concerns, discuss your exercise and physical activity plan with your health care provider. That's a good rule of thumb no matter what. Okay, but you're like, Natalie, wait, what should I ask my doctor? Lots of things. Ask your doctor whatever you want to ask them, but here are my three go-to questions. Are there any exercises I should avoid, right? Two, should I complete any testing prior to beginning my exercise routine? And three, will my current health affect my exercise routine? So let's talk about the impact of movement and exercise on the physical, cognitive, and emotional well-being. Yes. So the CDC said an estimated 110,000 deaths per year could be prevented in U.S. adults ages 40 and older 
Um, if they increase their moderate to vigorous physical activity by a small amount, even 10 minutes a day would make a difference, right? That's a lot of deaths that could be prevented just by adding 10 minutes a day to what you're doing. And again, we talked about some things we could do, whether it's taking the stairs, whether it's taking some time to walk around your building, whether it's going online and finding an online class that you want to do in your living room while your dog or your cat watch and try to figure out what's happening. But 10 minutes a day can make a huge difference. And we all have an extra 10 minutes a day. Yoga at night as a way to release any stress, to tap in with your heart rate. All of these things are great things to consider. The National Library of Medicine defines cognitive control as a subset of goal-directed self-regulatory operations involved in the selection, scheduling, and coordination of the computational process underlying perception, memory, and action. You're like, Natalie, you went a little like English teacher on us there. Here's what I mean. Cognitive control just means your brain's beautiful ability to do its brainy things. And how do we help our brain do its brainy things? by getting in a little extra oxygen, by doing a little extra exercise, right? Okay, so the American Psychological Association says that usually within five minutes after moderate exercise, you get a mood enhancement effect. I'm gonna put a cute little pin in that because let me clarify. The first eight to 10 minutes of any exercise are brutal. It is when your muscles are getting warm it is when they're getting used to the movement. It is when your heart rate is getting used to being at this increased level, okay? So understand, whether you are a professional athlete or whether you are just starting out, those first eight to 10 minutes are not gonna be the most enjoyable part of the workout, but if you stick with it, you will receive that mood enhancing effect. For those of you who enjoy running, um, we've heard about the runner's high before, right? And if you ever, uh, saw the movie Legally Blonde from way back when uh, there's a quote where Reese Witherspoon's character is defending, I can't even remember her name right now, but um, the character was like, exercise relief is endorphins, and it does, and happy people are people that generally exercise, right? So like it says, releasing endorphins, and what else is cool is that when you exercise, you tap into that fight or flight, so we all go through fight or flight. Um, we hear about instances of parents like lifting buses off of children. Like I'm not talking about that kind of fight or flight. What I'm saying is that if we can get closer and get comfortable with that feeling, should you have to tap into that fight or flight, it's not as terrifying, right? But let's just focus on the endorphins here. No one's gonna ask you to lift a, lift a bus off of anybody anytime soon. Like I think you promise. <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. This part we've all been waiting for. Exercise that will strengthen bodies and minds of all stages of aging. And you know, we're going to try it. But before we get into the moves, I got something else that I want to talk to you about on the next slide. Um, something that I think is super important for us to talk about, for everybody to talk about is sitting to standing. So I'm going to move my chair back so you can see more of me. Yay. Perfect. I think this is something we don't spend enough talking about, enough time talking about. How do we get from a seated position to a standing position? And actually, I was talking with my mom about this from the picture before. I was talking with my mom about this, about sitting to standing. And she said, after we talked about it, what she noticed was when she was at church, she would grab onto the pew in front of her and like use that to pull herself up, right? I remember my grandmother using the armrests of her chair to push herself up. And while I'm all about some upper body strength, if we are not practicing sitting to standing, utilizing our legs, then we are not giving these muscles the love that they deserve. So let's talk about how we get from a seated position to a standing position. And as someone who does sit in a desk chair a fair amount, it's a good thing to practice for all of us. So I have a chair without armrests, right? If Going through this doesn't feel great. Practice with a chair that does have armrests. This is also an exercise to consider using in a chair that is stationary. If you have a rolly chair, we really need to make sure we have a good setup with our feet so we're not spinning all over the place, okay? So how do we get from a seated position to a standing position? So. We've been here, we've been having this fun little chat. We've been talking about movement for all bodies. Oh my gosh, we gotta get up. Here's what we're gonna do. First and foremost, both feet on the ground. And let's actually take a moment and think about our feet, right? 
Imagine that each foot has four points, two in the heel and two in the ball of the foot. So let's take a moment together and let's focus on what ends up being eight points in your feet. Two in the heels, two in the ball of the foot. Maybe take a moment, wiggle your toes, right? If you've been sitting for a moment, just wiggling your toes can get that blood flow going. Yeah, okay, so we have our feet on the floor. We are going to, we can either hold on to our armrests or we can move towards the front of our chair. We want to have our feet planted. I'll go this way. So that you're at a 90 degree angle, right? We've got that base set up, chest is lifted, core is strong, right? Breaks right through the core. Now, if you're feeling some kind of way from this position, you can come straight to standing. Oh, we did it. You're like, Natalie, I don't, I'm not quite sure about that. You can bring your hands to your thighs and it's going to be a balance of not only pushing into the heel, the hand pushing into the thigh and imagine this weightlessness as we bring ourselves up to standing. Nice. Last but not least, again, if you have armrests and your chair is stationary, again, if we are on a rolly chair, we want to really make sure we've got that good base set up. You can press into the armrest and lift yourself straight up. But the focus here and the goal here and the key here is again to make sure we've got that 90-90 set up, okay? Awesome. I think in my notes on the screen in front of you, I have some comments about things to remember as you're going from seated to standing. Please don't hold your breath. Um, that will cause a change in your blood pressure, and that's just not a good time for anybody. I'm gonna come back a little bit closer. I feel like we were too, we were too far away from each other, now we're back. Okay, next thing. So, all movement comes from these six movement patterns. A squat, a lunge, a push, a pull, a bend, and core. And the pictures I have are from exercise, but how does that impact our day-to-day -day life? Well. We did a squat when we were getting up and down out of the chair, right? So squats are not just for weightlifting. Also, when you're going to pick something up off the floor, we had a conversation about this um, earlier. If you're going to pick something up off of the floor, I always recommend getting into a squat position, right? So if you're picking something up off the floor, I like to recommend that you have something to hold on to, right? You never know when you might have a case of feeling lightheaded and just anytime we can have the extra support. If you're picking something up, bend from the knees to pick something up off of the ground, okay? Be mindful, especially if you're going to pick up something heavy. If you tip from the hip and lift, that could cause some pretty serious back pain. For a lunge, which lunges are one of my favorite exercises, um, because they target both sides of the leg. When you get into a lunge position, you're working your quad, which is the muscle on the top of the leg, as well as the hamstring, the muscle underneath, right? And we use lunges when we're going from the floor to standing. So let's talk about how to do that. Should you find yourself in need to get down onto the floor or up from the floor, right? So we're gonna set up that lunge position you might not be able to see my feet, it's totally fine. I've got some awesome rainbow bands on, it's perfect. So first thing we're gonna do, we need to decide which leg is stronger. I'm right-handed, so my right leg tends to be a little bit stronger, but we're gonna set up that lunge position. You're gonna send one leg forward, the other leg back. Hips are square, knees are bent 90-90. That's an easy lunge. Now, I'm not saying that we have to go for that 90-90 range every time. When we're getting up and down off the floor, we need to know which leg is stronger. So let's take a moment, right? We're standing, we're seeing, okay, this is my, this is my left leg is forward. Okay, it feels pretty solid, but when I send my right leg forward, okay, I feel a little bit stronger here, right? It's my dominant side. So when we're getting up and down off the floor, if you need to get onto the floor, let's start with that easy lunge, okay? Now, we're gonna come down as low as we can. And when we get to a comfortable spot, we're gonna bring our hands to the floor for balance. You can bring your hands to the thigh as you come down if that feels better, 
or if it feels good, bring the hands to the floor. From here, you're gonna tuck both knees under so you're in a tabletop position. Set up that firm base, palms are planted, and then you can come down to the side and voila, we did it! But you're like, Natalie, wait, how do I get back up? We're gonna reverse it and come right back up. So we find that seated position on one side. Again, go for the dominant side, it's stronger. So for me, right side. We're gonna get back to that tabletop position. Walk your hands out in front of you, come to that tabletop position. Again, I'm gonna send my right leg forward, it's my dominant leg, ah, we're setting it up. I'm gonna bring my hand to my thigh, nice little hip flexor stretch too while we're at it. I'm gonna tuck the toes of my left foot. Even though I've tucked my toes, the weight is going into this right foot, specifically my right heel. And I'm gonna press myself up through that lunge. Ta-da, we did it. Lunges, not just for exercise, for day-to-day -day life. Okay, so the next movement we have is push. And even though I love a push-up, you use pushes Every day, when you go to close a door, you are pushing. When we were getting up off the ground, we had to push ourselves up, right? That's the third movement pattern. Pull, not just for chin-ups. Other instances where we're pulling things, when you pull a door open, if you have a dog like me, my dog's name is Annie. She's a year old. She's a black lab boxer mix, and I have to pull on the leash occasionally. Pulling movements. We've got hinge or bend. We talked about this kind of movement. Some people like this for lift. You're standing, think about folding right at the hips. Keep the chest broad. Not only is this a great stretch for the backs of the legs, but you hinge when you go into that squat to pick something up off the ground. And then finally you have core, which is probably the most important, right? You think about it, your core is not just your abdominal muscles right here in front, your core is your back as well. And if you have ever suffered from low back pain, you know the importance of a strong core. Okay, so with all of that in mind, now let's get to the fun part. Let's talk about some fun movements. So everything we're gonna talk about can happen in a chair. So if you've got a chair, let's grab it. Let's do this together. I'm gonna take a little scoot back. So first and foremost, gosh, remember when we were thinking about the corners of our feet? Let's do that again together. We're sitting up tall. We're thinking about rooting down through our sit bones. And it's like we've got helium in our heart, keeping our chest lifted. Let's tap back into those four corners of our feet. Maybe wiggle our toes. Okay. And as we're going through all of these movements, one side might feel different than the other. That is perfectly fine, right? Our goal is to find balance between the two sides, but honor your body and meet yourself exactly where you are, okay? So we're seated, we're sitting up tall, we're feeling good. Let's go ahead, we're going to extend that right leg forward. We're gonna keep that left leg bent. And just here, just even stretching out that leg, you're gonna feel the whole back of the leg, right? You've got your hamstrings, you've got your calves. Please be mindful of your, your knees. At no point do I want you to lock your knee in place. That's not fun. So just here, and we could utilize that hip hinge if you wanted to, to tip forward to just enhance the stretch down the back of the leg. You can have the hand to the thigh, one hand on each thigh, whatever feels good. We'll roll up, let's take it to the other side. We'll extend that left leg. Again, just right here, you're gonna feel that stretch automatically, right? And then if you're ready, we can have the hands on the thigh, we can utilize that hip hinge Already I can tell this side's a little, a little different than the other, and that's perfectly fine. We're gonna come on up easy. So back in that seated position, let's take some ankle rotation. So if you want to let that leg hover, go for it. Or if you need to keep it on the ground, you can extend the leg. But either way, we're gonna take some wrist, some wrist rotations. Natalie, what are you even doing? Ankle rotations, we'll get to the wrist rotations, don't you worry, but we're gonna rotate that ankle one way and make sure you go the other way too. If it feels sticky, right? Or if it feels a little crunchy, stop the movement and talk to a physician. Let's hit the other side. Ankle rotations one way, the other way. My ankles kind of pop no matter what, so I definitely feel it here. Okay, 
From here, if your hip mobility allows it, can we bring that right leg over the left? Like we're at a fancy tea party, right? But even just this movement, again, we're working on that hip mobility. You're gonna feel the stretch around the side of that hip. And just sitting up tall here. If it's feeling good, you can bring that knee a little bit closer. Be gentle, be gentle. Bring it a little bit closer. You're gonna feel it more into that hip flexor. And again, through the side of the hip into the side of the leg. Keep the chest lifted. Let's take it to the other side. Bring it up and over. And just again, just sitting here already, hip flexors are engaged. And then if it feels good, we can grab onto the leg. I like to have one hand under my leg as well. Some people just like to hold on to the knee. Everybody is different no matter what. Let's not pull too hard on any of our joints, okay? So can we bring that knee a little bit closer for a nice stretch? <sighs> that feels pretty good, I dig it. Let's bring it down. Okay, so we've done our ankle rotations. We have stretched the hip flexor. We can also do a bit of a march in place even in our seat, right? Just taking some time to lift one leg and then the other. And these are great moves. Again, if you work a desk job, these are moves that we can do while we're sitting and typing away. I don't know about you all, but if I'm sitting at my desk, I will find myself in some interesting positions, right? I definitely find that I like sit more on one side of my body than the other, right? So taking even just 10 minutes while you're working to go through some of these exercises is going to help you find that balance and stability and that even feeling between the body. And I mean, it's a nice little brain break too. So we're marching in place, very easy. We're gonna still the legs. We already kind of stretched the sides of the hips and the hip flexors, but if you're like, ooh, Natalie, I want a little bit more, I got you. You can take one leg at a time and a slight rotation out and in, right? Slight rotation out and then in. Again, every body is different, right? So maybe your gate opener comes wider, Maybe it stays a little bit closer, right? Just meet yourself exactly where you are. Perfect. Okay, legs are feeling pretty good, right? But what about our core that we were talking about? That's so important. So we're gonna come to the front of our chair. We're gonna take a little modified cat-cow, right? Cat-cow really targets your lower vertebrae, which are like the size of your fist. And you think they'd just be all stacked on top of each other, but your lower vertebrae are very flexible. I think we forget sometimes how flexible they are. So let's remind ourselves. For taking that cat cow again, we're gonna hinge. We're gonna place our hands on our thighs. I like to have my fingertips facing in so my elbows have some room. If you prefer to have your elbows tracked back, you go for it. But I want you to think about arching through the spine, right? right between the shoulder blades, that spot that like you can never really reach, we're targeting right there and we're pressing. So again, that pushing movement, pushing into the thighs, arching through the back, like a Halloween cat, right? Arching through the back. And then we're gonna take that cow, kind of taking the counter movement, think about lifting the chest, <sighs> deep belly breaths here, arch through the back. And if you are a regular yogi or a regular yoga, practicer and you're like, Natalie, I'm not feeling that full range of motion. I get it. I totally get it. You are always welcome to take these moves and take these poses to where you take them normally. Again, we're just talking about some things we can do while we're sitting in a chair. So again, cat to cow. Now, while we've been able to target more of the center of the core, you've got your obliques, which are these muscles here on the side that help with stabilization. So how can we work those? Let's take our right hand, place it on our left knee, and let's open and rotate. You can take this left hand, if you've got a chair, you can grab onto the back of the chair. If you just want this hand to hang out in space, I love it. Nice little rotation. And maybe your spine might have some opinions about this. Um, I know that you all aren't as close to be able to hear, but my spine definitely made a couple of sounds, and that's totally cool. But we're pulling our belly button towards our spine, we're rotating, we're lifting through the chest, if it feels good in your neck, can you turn and look at the wall behind you? Take your time with it. Easy. And then slowly unwind. This is definitely not a move to snap back into place. Don't do that. Other side. Again, this side might feel a little different. 
start with the hand. Again, right hand can be out in space or holding onto the chair. Keep thinking long lines. Think about lifting as you rotate. We're rotating. Maybe we're looking at the back wall. Yeah. Okay. So bringing it back center. Another great move for targeting obliques is a seated oblique reach. For this one, you're just bringing the arm up and then you're thinking about crunching to the side. Just a little crunch to the side, right? You'll feel it right in that side body. If you're feeling some kind of way, of course, you can take a leg with you. But that's up to you. So we've got our core. Next, let's open up our chest. If you're like me, maybe you find that you kind of like mm, throughout the day, right? It is a natural tendency to want to protect our bodies by rounding our shoulders forward. When we round our shoulders forward, we shorten our pectoral muscles, and then we just end up like this. So first and foremost, ah, arms open wide, shoulders back and down. You're going to feel the stretch through the pecs into the shoulder. Nice wide stretch, palms facing to the ceiling, but then you can rotate the palms so that they face up, right? And you're gonna feel that stretch, it's gonna hit the tricep and the bicep. And just from here, we can go palms to the ceiling, palms to the back of the room, palms to the ceiling, palms to the back of the room, shoulders back and down, soft bend the elbows again, let's not lock anything out of place, right? Another great move for the chest, because here's something that took me a while to learn. When you work one side of the body, it is important to make sure you work the other side, right? Because you've got these muscles that are working together. So if you're not working your pectoral muscles, you're extending your back muscles, which causes you to round forward, putting unnecessary tension on things that don't need to have unnecessary tension. So it is important that we are also practicing rolling our shoulders down our back. Let's take a couple of shoulder rolls, <sighs> rolling it down the back. And you're gonna feel your lats, which are those big, beautiful back muscles right in the middle. As you roll your shoulders down and back, we can take a couple forward as well. Awesome. We can have our hands out in front. So again, thinking about our biceps, which is the muscle of the front of the arms, we can come in for shoulder taps and release. Shoulder taps and release. People are gonna walk by your office. They're gonna look at you and they're gonna be so jealous because they wish they knew all of this, right? Very easy. The goal is to keep the elbows lifted, right? And squeeze the top of the arm. You've got your triceps as well, the back of the arm. A great one for this is just to reach up and think about patting yourself on the back. If you want to take that other hand to guide, that's fine. But again, let's not pull on anything. And then, of course, you want to make sure you're showing some love to the other side. Finally, speaking of joint health, our wrists often get neglected. Um, if you type on a keyboard, you might experience some wrist pain, driving frequently. Or maybe you have fallen asleep with your hands curled in close. So let's always make sure we're showing our wrists some love. My favorite, just a simple wrist stretch, palm face in. Again, we're not putting too much pressure. We're guiding here, right? Palm facing in, and then we flip for the palm to face up. Of course, we want to take it to the other side. And then frequently throughout the day, just take a moment for a little skidamarink, a dink, a dink wrist rotations forward and backward. Same with the fingers, right? It's really easy, especially if you're feeling stressed to clench everything in. We want to think about expanding through the fingers, long lines. That was awesome. All right. So that was some fun movement for us. And we're back closer together. Local resources, because as much fun as it is to listen to me tell you stuff, there's a lot of super knowledgeable people out there who would love to share their wisdom with you. Silver Sneakers is a program that I'm very passionate about. Um, I'm a certified Silver Sneakers instructor, and it is something that the YMCs of Greensboro honor and utilize. So like it says for resource number one, the YMCA honors Silver Sneakers. Personally, I like Brian, but any YMCA is a great YMCA. Um, O2 Fitness also recognizes Silver Sneakers. I like the one at the Friendly Center location. And... Can you go to one, more than one location? Of course you can, right? Different gyms have different things. Different facilities have different offerings. Find the ones that work for you. And what if I already have a gym membership, but I have silver sneakers through my insurance? What do I do? Great question. 
bring your insurance information or your silver sneakers information to the staff at the gym where you go and they can help you with it. Let's talk about setting some SMART goals because it's one thing to practice this when we're together, but what happens when the camera's off? What happens when it's just you? How can we make sure that we're holding ourselves accountable? So SMART goal, it's an acronym. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. If you're setting SMART goals, you're setting yourself up for success. So when we say specific, we're talking details, we're talking numbers, we're talking outcomes. It's one thing to say, I want to lose weight. What does that look like? Or it's one thing to say, I want to lift more weight. How much weight do you want to lift? I want to go to more exercise classes. How many exercises classes are you going to? I want to walk more. How many steps a day is that going to be? We want the numbers. Measurable. How many, how much, how often? This is where the rubber meets the road because it's one thing to say you want to go to the gym or you want to exercise more often. It is another thing to say, okay, on Mondays, I'm going to meet with my walking group. On Tuesdays, I'm going to look up an online fitness video. On Wednesdays, I'm going to go to the gym. On Thursdays, I'm going to take a rest day because Natalie said rest days were important, right? Achievable. I think this is where sometimes setting goals can be a little intimidating for people. I want you to set goals that challenge you, but set goals that you can achieve, right? And you know yourself better than anybody. And the sky is the limit for you. It is. And we want to make sure that we're setting these challenging goals, but we're also setting smaller goals for ourselves along the way, right? If you want to go to the gym five days a week, for 30 minute sessions because that gets us to that two and a half hour mark. What's a smaller goal we can set instead of saying, I'm going to go five times a week for a year. What about the first three months? Let's start there. Let's make it achievable because as we're checking those boxes and we're getting those goals, we can make our goals bigger and better and broader. Relevant. That's your why. And so for us, we're talking about healthy movement and fitness. And so even though I want to know all about your goal to read 80 books this year, we got to think about our movement for making ourselves the healthiest version that we can, right? So we're making it relevant to this thing that we're talking about. And then finally, time bound. If you put a time frame on it, that's going to keep you motivated and be flexible, right? Goals are there to help you. They are not an end all be all. Life happens and that is okay. Embrace your journey. I'm kind of going with that last part about being flexible. Everybody's journey is different the same way that everybody is different. Your journey does not look like my journey, does not look like anybody else's journey. And that's okay because the one that you're on is the right one for you. Just stick with it. Was that my last one? Oh my gosh, cool story. That was my last slide. I'm Natalie Huffine. Thank you so much for letting me talk to you. And I'll see you soon, okay? Thank you so much, Natalie. I am so energized. I bet you are too. And I bet you'd like to hear Natalie again. So remember that you can see a video of her presentation from tonight just by going to the ACAP YouTube channel and you can exercise along with her and try these things out. Thank you, Natalie. I also want to thank Griswold Home Care again for sponsoring tonight's program. Come back next, next month on May 18th. You know, most people, as they age, say they want to stay in their homes, but that takes some doing. On May 18th, Brian Keith of Accessibility, Mobility, Repair, and Rental We'll speak about home safety, accessibility, home changes, modifications, and equipment that help with safety and independence for people who are aging in place, aging in their homes. If you'd like to be notified about our upcoming programs, please like us on our Facebook page at ACAP Guilford or register for an upcoming program on our website at ACAP Community. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We'll see you next month.